now after uh, finishing the talk on posterior malleus now we are coming to syndesmotic injuries so i think syndesmotic injuries is very important uh, as a part of ankle fractures and i'm not doing, just going to talk about as a part of ankle fractures but syndesmotic injuries in general without any fractures so that is also equally important uh, so we'll talk about both of them in this case in which we'll talk about uh, the presentation, uh, the mechanism of injury uh, and uh, then what is the investigation and management finally. So uh, just to say that high ankle sprain itself, uh, the incidence is uh, very underestimated because most of the time they are not really diagnosed properly. 1% of all ankle injuries uh, in uh, US military is uh, high ankle sprain. So if you look at it, the number, the incidence of this injury is still quite uh, small as compared to a low ankle sprain. When we talk about low ankle sprain, it is the ligaments ATFL and CFL which get torn on the lateral side. Uh, high ankle sprain involves syndesmosis. So it is common in a uh, football player. So this is just one of the uh, clipping that I'm going to show you. This is for one of uh, the uh, football, uh, American football uh, players named uh, Tua and uh, who uh, sustained a syndesmosis uh, injury in 2019. Uh, and uh, then after that, he underwent a surgery uh, of syndesmosis reconstruction using a knotless tightrope. And he was able to return back after uh, less than a month. And then he played another uh, football match after that. So that is uh, the reason that the tightrope as such for syndesmosis after this became uh, uh, very common and became very prevalent. And it was indeed called as a two-hour tightrope surgery. So just uh, uh, this video will be played in uh, 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 slow motion as well. So just look at the, yeah, over here. So if you look at the direction of uh, the ankle sprain, so, so you can see that this is not really an inversion sprain, but it is more of uh, an eversion injury. So if you look over here, this is when the actually the ankle went into eversion and uh, this is how an ankle sprain or a high ankle sprain happened. This is when you injure a syndesmosis ligament in contrast to an inversion sprain in which you injure the ATFL and the CFL. So when we talk about the syndesmosis injury in the ankle fractures, uh, the incidence is still also underestimated. 13% of all the ankle fractures and 20% of those which need surgery have an associated syndesmosis injuries. If we talk about the uh, Lodge Hansen classification, it is most common in pronation external rotation and pronation abduction in which I think it is present in all of them. Uh, and uh, it is also seen in supination external rotation injury, which indeed was uh, not initially thought of. When we talk about Weber fractures, in Weber C fractures, it is present in 100% of the cases. And in Weber 4B, uh, which is at the level of syndesmosis, still almost 40% of the patients would have some form of syndesmosis instability. Uh, why this is important is because neglect of syndesmosis or an improper reduction of syndesmosis leads to pain uh, or disability or uh, 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 starting of osteoarthritis in the longer run. Uh, when we talk about syndesmosis injuries, they happen as uh, you saw the video as well. Uh, force external rotation with the ankle in dorsiflexion along with the axial loading of the ankle. If uh, the injury involves a medial side as well, so either deltoid ligament or a medial malleus can get fractured in those cases. Uh, just briefly about the anatomy of the syndesmosis. So syndesmosis is the distal tibiofibular joint uh, between the tibia and the fibula and uh, we have ligaments which support the syndesmosis. Uh, so tibiofibular ligaments are actually uh, one in the anterior, one is interosseous and the other one is posterior. So when we talk about anterior, uh, it is AITFL uh, which attaches to the fibula at uh, this uh, distal anterior aspect and then goes uh, uh, proximally and medially to attach to uh, the tibia. So if we talk about the fragments, so uh, this fragment is actually called uh, Chaput's uh, fragment and uh, where it attaches to the fibula is called West Gaff fragment. 
so this is important to know for mcq point, point of view as well interosseous ligament is actually just a distal extension of uh, the interosseous uh, membrane and the last 5 cm forms the iol uh, another strong ligament is pitfl or posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament we have another ligament around that area also which is called as ttfl or transverse tibiofibular ligament and the other one is pitfl or posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament this also uh, from the fibula it goes uh, uh, proximally and medially to the tibia and the fragment on which pitfl attaches onto the distal tibia is called as wokeman's fragment